James Carl Barker, I'm Technical Specialist for Electrical Architecture. One of the good things about my role is the guys in my team get to see all the different systems on the car. So one day they'll be working on powertrain and chassis systems, the next day they'll be working on body or infotainment system. But fundamentally, uh, system architecture design is about defining interfaces. There's multiple control units on a car, typically we can have over a hundred microprocessors and, and ECUs on, on a high-end vehicle and system architecture is all about how we partition software and those different ECUs communicate with, with one another across the, the networks on the vehicle. I've been uh, working in the hybrids department in JLA now for a year and I am currently on the graduate program. Uh, I'm working on models to understand how uh, future hybrid systems would work and which ones are worth to investigate more and worth to invest in. It, it is uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering and also control engineering. What really interests me um, and what I feel, feel very exciting is that I know which product I'm working for and I see this product every day when I walk around the company. I see it on TV, I see it in magazines. I, I know the product I work for is present and it's very concrete. We work with scores of different alliances and also foundations. A good example of this would be Geneva. Geneva is an alliance over 170 members, all dedicated to producing open source infotainment components. We work with some of the biggest names in the world. We work with Intel. We work with Google and Apple. We go to the Consumer Electronics Show, and, and not just to look on the show floor, but to meet with some of the biggest players. Recently, Infotainment have opened a facility on the west coast of the USA, in Portland, Oregon, so that we can be much closer to all of those startups and big consumer electronics companies, all the way from Seattle right the way down to San Diego. My name's Pete Stairs. I'm a group leader in vehicle dynamic systems within the chassis electronics department. We're one of a number of teams within JLR that writes embedded control software that runs on production vehicles. We generate the control strategies using Simulink, which is then converted into production C code and compiled for use on the ECU. We are also responsible for a range of software validation activities, including unit tests, integration tests, hill rig testing, and also supporting vehicle testing. Within the wider department, we also lead the development of lower level ECU functions, including the hardware design, operating system, and low level drivers. One of the key benefits of working within the automotive industry is we get a lot of exposure to and time working on the products that we're developing. James Barry, I'm the audio visual group leader within infotainment in electrical engineering at JQ Land Rover and my team looks after the introduction of audio and video technology for the infotainment. The challenges we face is how we keep pace with the development of consumer electronic devices but also how we make those things work in an automotive environment. For example, the temperature range that a car has to and is expected to function at is um, far more severe and far more far more taxing than um, for example your tablet or your phone will continue to function at. Part of the work we now do within the infotainment function is to look at how the user connects with the car. So it's not only about um, the devices and the storage that we have on the car but it's also about how they can bring their own media to the car and that has then led us to need to need to look at things like Bluetooth, HDMI, USB, MHL, a lot of those types of protocols. Yeah, so the, the in-vehicle networks in, in the vehicle are becoming very advanced now so um, we're now looking at very advanced DSP uh, network protocol chips um, to enable to send large amounts of data um, across um, very cost-effective and lightweight wiring in the vehicle. 
So, you know, talking about data rates of, of gigabits per second um, down sort of very basic um, unshielded twisted pair cables, for example. Hi, I'm Claire Lucas and I'm part of the model-based engineering team. So within that team, my role is model in the loop and that means that I derive and compile models of different actuators within the car and put those as a bit of software that can be used to test the control on the ECU. So one of the recent models that I've finished is the, um, the window, so a future window, which means that we don't yet have the geometry, we don't yet know the exact weight of the window, the exact torque feedback on the motor. And it might surprise you that windows have so much control in them, but actually it's not just a switch controlling a piece of glass, it's got end learning, it's got obstacle detection, and it's got um, automatic and manual features, which all need to be tested together with the whole car.